U.S. Open champion, Bryson DeChambeau! Gosh, I'm trying to hold it in right now. Um, the support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson Effect. <laughs> I mean, with how much support we have out here, and it's just the start, that's that's a testament to what Live Golf is and what the Crushers are doing, what uh, our team's doing, and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So super excited for the, the future of Live. to at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, very proud of everybody. And, and of course, Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Renzi. Great stuff uh, with Mick. As I stated, uh, we've hit. Uh, we're going to hit everything tonight. We started off some good, some good Major League Baseball talk. Gave you some good background as far as why teams are winning, and if you look at the correlation and the numbers. So you know, bullpen. And in fact, starting pitching. Like I said, it's how it all started. Starting pitching. I'm not saying it's not important. You can't have a crap starting pitcher and t- terrible. But people over. I read these previews every day. And like smart guys too, when they but they get into like serious numbers about regression and you know velocity, this and all this other uh, type of stuff. And I'm like, all right, good, they're fine. What about the other six innings of the game? What about the other five innings of the game? So and these pitchers doesn't mean they're going to get lit up in the first couple of innings. Paxton is a great example of this. And for for any like baseball nerd sort of numbers guy, sharp guy out there that understands metrics and Kurtz is one, you know, Kurtz, Kurtz isn't all out, but Kurtz, you know, we'll follow this. We'll talk to Kurtz. Kurtz will join us later. Paxton's a good example. Is Paxton good? Well, people don't think so, right? People all look at his numbers. Look at his, this rate, look at this rate, look at this, look at his walk, all this other stuff. And people fade him all the time when he pitches with the Dodgers. That's why he was, uh, they were minus 115 the other day. He pitched a shutout. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he'll get hit once in a while, but he ain't going to get lit up all the time. People overreact to to starting pitchers' numbers when it comes to handicapping baseball, and you just simplify it. We went over. Which teams hit the most home runs? It was basically six of the top seven teams in baseball that were number one through seven. Who has the best uh, bullpen ERAs? The top teams. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? It's just it's, – it's not rocket science, uh, this stuff – People want to overthink things and try to complicate uh, baseball in the modern era. But unfortunately, it is what it is. And if you don't hit home runs, uh, you don't win. Rob Vino is setting up. He's going to join us uh, in a moment. I look forward to his thoughts on the remaining CFL uh, games. And maybe Rob is luckier than I was and had a uh, a better number than the 50 and a half that I got in with. And they got to 50 tonight in the CFL game. But uh, we got soccer again in the morning. The Euro Cup has been off for a couple of days. And the Euros are back. We got Switzerland and Italy are the first teams up. This is a match. I did a video earlier on TikTok breaking down this game. And I think this game's going to be a draw. We haven't had draws. We haven't had extra time yet and penalty kicks yet. You know, so teams have been content with the draws before. This is the first knockout stage games. 
And as crazy as this Euro Cup is, and as even as it is, there's going to be, we know, we're going, we're, there's going to be draws, there's going to be penalty kicks, there's going to mm-hmm. be big time drama. And I think we probably get started right away with the drama with Italy and Switzerland. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if this game was scoreless after 90 minutes of play. We love the under two and a half, and I think the game goes to a draw. Let's bring in Rob Vino rocking his Argo blue tonight. What's going on, Rob? I am good, guys. How are you? Doing all right, Rob, except I'd be doing a little bit better if I didn't have 50 and a half as my number uh, tonight in the CFL game that ended up getting a 50. And points left on the field. Fajardo yes. throws the interception in the end zone. Dukes throws an interception when they're moving the football. He threw another one, and we got we got help with the you know with, with the teaser with the return. Uh, Cote misses a field goal on the Alouettes that normally he wouldn't. It's, it's kind of a tough loss for the over here, and it's been a couple of games in a row, Rob. The league is starting to trend to the under. Yeah, and the, the numbers have gone from what we saw in the beginning, right? Gave some 40s, mid 40s. Yeah. A couple of high 40s, and now we're into the 50s, and here's where it starts. I, too, was on the wrong end of the 50 and a half, lucky for me, and then generally I won't play both ends of the game, but I did like Montreal so much that I did play Montreal land over so I get a split out of it, but you would love to come away 2-0, and like you mentioned, a lot of opportunity, and just not a lot of success in cashing in, so um, it is a tough break on that total, and... Last night, the um, the Edmonton-BC game, right, 24-21, another one. Totaled up around 51 and a half, 52, stays under the number. Yeah, and another one in which the BC Lions were, I'm sure you saw, if you saw it, Rob, if you didn't, the BC Lions were about to score in the third quarter. Their fullback fumbled the ball on the goal line. He was going in, got smoked, the ball, you know, bounced out. Points left on the field. And and Edmonton, of course, just find ways to just sort of lose late in these games. That was a frustrating <laughs> one as well. Yeah, they, listen, the, the the Elks are zero and four, but they are three and one against the spread on the season. So tomorrow's game, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Calgary Stampeders, Saturday night, seven o'clock Eastern. The first two games of the week were not on the CBS Sports Network. These two will be the remaining two. So it starts tomorrow. If you want to watch some CFL football tomorrow night, the Bombers. Three and a half point road favorites over the Calgary Stampeders. Total is 47. Cam, what are you doing with this game? Tough game, Marenzi, but this is where we think we're going to take Winnipeg. Uh, they've been very, very disappointing out of the gate, but also had injuries and they're still beat up. But they do have a couple people coming back. I can't expect the Michael Shea team to start like this and not have a win. Calgary been playing a little bit better than people thought at the start of the year, but this is a spot for Winnipeg. If you can't beat Calgary and cover this number, uh, I don't, you know, they got bigger problems than I thought. We were on Montreal tonight, as you were, Gabe. This is a thing. Big game for the Bombers. I think they take care of business. Their pedigree is better. It's tough to lay the road points, but I like Winnipeg in this spot, like we did with Montreal tonight. Rob, the, the Bombers, uncharacteristically, 0-3 on the season. 0-3 straight up and against the spread. The Stampeders have only played two games, so I don't really know who they are fully yet. Um, they won their first game of the year, but albeit the Hamilton Tiger Cats are not a good football team this year. And then they played against the BC Lions, and I was at that game, and they played okay, actually. Their defense was was okay. It was a tough spot. There was like 50,000 people, 54,000 people there. So it was a loud road environment. I think the Stamps were fired up about 50 cent. Like half the team was out like watching him before the the, the game and stuff. So I think, you know, they got a little distracted. What do you think, Rob, of the Stampeders uh, Bombers side before we get to the total here? Yeah, to, we see the number come down a little bit in favor of Calgary, right? There's been Calgary money out there, um, four and a half down to three and a half now. And I see um, up on the screen here where we are posted as three. And a lot of that, I guess, due to the wide receiver injury situation for Winnipeg, Cam talked about it. I mean, every Tisa receiver is out of the lineup for Winnipeg. Yet, they've been able to hang around the last couple of weeks, Gabe. Um, You know, you should have probably beat Ottawa. Can't be losing to Ottawa after what we saw Montreal do to them last week. And in the BC game, like you say, they played a little bit better. But they haven't gotten over the hump. It's hard to trust a team like that as a favor on the road. Calgary, for what it's worth, it would be a great day 
for Winnipeg to have their receiving core because Winnipeg can't, excuse me, Calgary can't rush the passer. They have the worst pass rush in the league right now. Um, and on the counter side for that, Jake Mayer's been really, really good throwing the football. So I think I would prefer to take points here with Calgary, but I would be in that same um, sort of catch-22 that you are where we don't exactly know what Calgary is at this point in time. I think I remember last year, Gabe, coming on here, and they were getting like nine and a half and said to you, Gabe, you think they could cover nine and a half? And I don't know if you remember that game or not. And sure enough, I think they might have won it outright that night um, against Winnipeg. But I don't think with a week off, um, maybe Calgary at home plus three and a half is enough to get them over the hump. Winnipeg have historically dominated this uh, series, at least straight up. They've won six in a row. They've covered eight of the last ten times against Calgary. But, you know, they play all the time, so they know each other. Look, last year, 1918, uh, two years ago, 31-29, right? Like, so we've had some close games along the way here. And, you know, it sounds crazy to say, well, Winnipeg could be 0-4. We can't really look at it that way. We have to look at, like, okay, how are they playing? Who are they right now? And quite frankly, the Bombers are being priced like past teams. They're not, it's, they're not the same team anymore. I'm trying to hold it in right now. Um, the support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson effect. <laughs> I mean, with how much support we have out here and it's just the start, that's that's a testament to what Live Golf is and what the Crushers are doing, what uh, our team's doing, and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So super excited for the, the future of Live. It was nice to at least walk down the last few holes, or at least the last hole, knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, very proud of everybody, and, and of course, Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, It was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you you can do it again. Um, So I'm I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. This is Sports Rage. I'm Renzi. We're talking CFL football uh, right now. We're getting some baseball with Rob Vino as well. So, you yeah, know, Winnipeg Blue Bombers are like three and a half points. The total is 47 in this game. Saturday night, TSN, CBS Sports in the United States. Tough game, but Winnipeg are hard to trust right now. Calgary have played pretty good football uh, this year. They were right in that game against the BC Lions. And, in fact, it says 26-17. BC kicked a field goal, like, right at the the, the end of the game, and I was happy because it got the teaser over. But um, they they were right in that game. I think they can challenge with uh, – I think they can hang with uh, with the Bombers here. I really like those young wide receivers, Rob, the Calgary Stampeders have. They've got a bunch of new dudes, and people kind of wrote them off coming into the year. 
there's a theme in the CFL right now, guys, of Canadian wide receivers just lighting it up across the league. CIS guys, Philpot, and these guys, like you got all these Canadian kids that are wide receivers in the CFL right now, and uh, the stamps are loaded with them, and they're playing well, right? So if Mayer can get a little bit of time, I think he can pick apart the Bombers. You can throw the ball on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So I think Mayer could be poised for a good game. I would expect it to be a pretty close game, so I would rather the three and a half points as well. And the total, Rob, are we walking into a trap uh, here betting the over 47? Well, you know what? If it snaps on me, it snaps on me, Gabe. But I'll be there. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, honestly, what are you going to do? Um, yes. You can make a, a good enough case on both ends that the offenses are the best units on the field, and that's with Winnipeg being shy so many receivers because the Calgary run defense absolutely stinks. And if you want to lead on, lean on Oliveira and work your offense that way and then pass off of the rushing attack, Maybe Winnipeg could do that. The problem, really, for Winnipeg, Gabe, and maybe a reason why I like Calgary a little bit plus three and a half, is the offensive line hasn't been real good. So hopefully they can run the ball. Calgary's given up like about 121 yards per game on the ground, which is a lot in the CFL. Um, so maybe Winnipeg, like I say, could go a little inside out for two down football and, and work the pass off the run. I think they'll be able to score their share. I just look at their results so far. And to get over 47 and a half, you probably need them to get to 23, 24. And they seem capable. And the other side of the coin, like you say, Calgary should be able to throw. Look what Vernon Adams did to that team, throwing the football. And I know that's a better offense, um, you know, at least on paper. But Calgary's been looking good so far. And what Jake Mayer didn't do last year at QB, he's starting to do this year, um, at least through a couple of games. So I think I'll be on over, um, as well as probably the Calgary plus side. And I also really love the fact Dickinson's uh, really good off a of bye, too, in his career uh, over the years. He's a smart coach. They, they, they've had a bye to get ready uh, for this game. Should be a fun football game. I'm thinking like 27-24 type of game. It'll be close. So, you know, if Winnipeg wins, God bless them, but I can't trust them to win by four points. Hamilton Tiger Cats, speaking of can't trusting teams, Sky is starting to fall on these guys. And one last thing, actually, Rob said about the Bombers offensive line, Cam, and everybody tuning in. It has been bad. We see Caleros. Listen, Zach Caleros has been around a while, man. You remember, Rob, this guy was playing against Tim Tebow in the Sugar Bowl with the Cincinnati Bearcats. Yeah. He's buddies with Taylor, uh, with, uh, Taylor Swift and, uh, and Kelsey. He was a teammate with Travis and, uh, and Kelsey, the Kelseys, with the Cincinnati Bearcats. So they're buddies. So he's been partying with them and stuff. He's had a good career. He's hanging out with Taylor Swift and the VIPs now. He's getting a little bit older. He's really been beat up a lot in his career. The old line can't protect him. And when he, you know, he's almost like, you know, like Drew Bledsoe or so. Like when the play breaks down, it's dead. Like he can't scramble. So it's done. And let's just be real, guys. The offense looks better when Chris Strebler's on the field. Like how many times Mm -hmm. have we seen this year where it's stalling? They bring Strebler in. And then Strebler moves the ball for him. He's got a stronger arm. Great He's been point. in the NFL for the last couple of years. He's a bigger, stronger guy. He's not as beat up because he's been sitting on the bench in the NFL for the last four years. He hasn't done anything. So he's fresh, and he's running people over, Cam. He's impossible to stop when he scrambles, Strebler. And he's got yeah. a stronger arm. But you don't really want to – you can't bench Zach Caleros. But I'm just mm. telling you – if Zach Caleros got hurt, I don't think the coaching staff would think it's the end of the world. They'd be like, all right, we're fine. Put Strebler in. But Excellent point. Right, so I think this game's a close one tomorrow. I agree. And I'm with you guys on the over. I don't think you can play it any other way with that total. And maybe we do get burned, especially on the teaser game. If you guys like the dog, the dog to the over teaser. But great point on Strebler. This guy with the New York Jets, they fell in love with him. Gabe, you saw him in preseason football. He's one of the best preseason quarterbacks. I get it, a third-string quarterback. But he was run over, running over guys in the NFL. He's an animal. And they should have more packages for Strebler because that's what he's, he is. He's a Mack truck. And you're right. He does have a better arm. And they have to – Mike O'Shea and that team, they have to utilize Strebler. And he's good. And he's got experience in, in the National Football League. Put him out. Get him some packages, not just at the goal line, but a few more plays for him. And I think that would do Winnipeg well and maybe take the, the heat off their offensive line as well. I, there's a lot of reasons to use Strebler. I think Strebler, too, one cool thing. He lasted long enough. He got the pension. It was a good. big thing. He was he was a couple of, like, he needed one more. He needed to like, make the team again, and he did. 
even though we never really played, but I think he got his four or five years, whatever it is, four years. He got, he got, he's getting money now for life. He was on the Arizona Cardinals for a couple of years too, right? So he lasted in the NFL long enough to get that pension and get some money uh, for the rest of his life. Uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats, Paul Levi Mitchell, he's getting a lot of money and it's kind of up and down. This team, Vino, when you watch their games, they're on the ropes. Like, there's frustration. The defense is getting mad at the offense now a bit, you can tell. The coaching staff, you got Milanovic is back. He's a smart guy, but he's one of these smartest guys in the room type guys like Chris Jones. It doesn't win, but I'm smarter than you. And they're, they're, they want to fire the defensive coordinator in Hamilton. You know, the wheels have fallen off here, Vino, for the tie Cats. And then you get the Red Blacks that have sort of been up and down here. They get beat up, they win, and now they're back home. Hard not to bet the over here, even though that Red Black offense is a little bit, it's like it's drunk, Rob. You know what I'm saying? It's not smooth. <laughs> no, like, it's you know, it's like it's doing like a, a drunk driving <laughs> okay. test, like the Ottawa, like <laughs> some, drive, yeah, yeah, some drives, it moves, and then sometimes it's kind of like, yeah, like, all right, wait, we got a punt here. We got a punt. Yeah, like, red, you know what I mean? red Blacks, you're knocked over six pylons. And yeah, you're like, like, they're they're not, it's not a fluent yeah. offense, the Red Blacks. <laughs> no. like, but sometimes they're good. Sometimes. No, but they're not bad. <laughs> like, it's just sort of, yeah. like, it's a work in progress. It is. <laughs> trying to hold it in right now um the support's been overwhelming tickets for nashville this week are nearly sold out we are calling this the bryson effect <laughs> i mean with how much support we have out here and it's just the start that's that's a testament to what live golf is and what the crushers are doing what uh, our team's doing and um what we're trying to do for for nashville and places all across the globe so super excited for the, the future of live at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe but um, very proud of everybody and, and of course Tiro. I mean what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. Rob Vino in the house, Cam Stewart kicking it with us. I am Gabriel Morenci. L.A. Dodgers, and Rob happens to be a Dodger fan as well. Rob, are you on the Dodgers tonight? They're up 2-1 right now. Bottom of the fifth inning, and um, there's one out. Uh, San Francisco's batting right now. Dodgers up 2-1. Any piece of uh, the blue tonight? Well, we cashed with the blue because we had the first five inning on the run line, laid the half a run. Got home two to one. Nice. What they can do now? Uh, well, hopefully they get home. <laughs> Let's. I don't want to jump the gun here because San Francisco's still hitting, but hopefully we do get there with that. And um, you know, if it does, I'll call it quits. If it doesn't, maybe we'll look into in game. But I thought that Mac would have a little bit of a chance against Webb. But in, in game, I, I know as Dodger fans, 
you watch Gavin Stone throw the other night, and boy, they just overcome these pitching injuries year after year. Last year was Bobby Miller saving the day. This year it's, you know, Stone and Nat and these guys saving the day. It's crazy. It really is unbelievable. Like, one after another injuries, guys. Walker Bueller's supposed to come back. He didn't. He came back. He's gone again. Clayton Kershaw, his rehab. We can go on and on. It's just constant. And, you know, it's it's too bad. Like, most teams would panic. Oh, Mookie Betts is out. Yamamoto is out. Yeah, fine. You know, they'll be more rested later for the playoffs. Especially Yamamoto. Mm-hmm. I have no problem with it. As long as his arm is fine when he comes back. But it will be. He's not really in. It's more of a rest situation they just need uh, with him. And I think his arm will be fresh. So before I get you out of here, Rob, you and I lo- love to bet our overs in the UFL, XFL, college football, football. Said different sports. I always tell people this. People are like, oh, you only bet overs, Moran. See, as Cam knows, hockey, I'm an under guy, right, yep. for the most part. I'll bet overs once in a while, like, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, but when it comes to soccer, Rob, under. I, I feast on unders. I bet the under two and a half. I play alt-line parlays under three and a half. as like both the games as well that I'll play, the two and a halves. And every, like, league is different or, like, Copa tonight, whatever. Brazil were massive favorites. And, and um, and you know, to, to Colombia were big favorites tonight against Costa Rica. So it's not a surprise there were a lot of goals in those games. But the Euro starts tomorrow again, Rob. Knockout stage. We got Italy and Switzerland. Dude. I think they can play two games and not get to, to three goals, these two teams. <laughs> like, seriously. And they can play, like, two matches, and I'm not sure you add up the final score, and it's three. Yeah, it's minus 200. Fine. Uh, but we can even go, you know, a little bit better if you want to go under one and a half. I don't think it's a terrible look. I love the draw in this game, though, guys. I think it wouldn't be shocked if it was nil-nil after 90 minutes, 1-1 one, one after 90 minutes. And... um I think you know, we can make some money here. Corner kick props or something I've been living off of. But any soccer betting for you, Vino? Come on, your last name's Vino. You got to be betting on Italy and Switzerland. <laughs> well, and, 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 and if there's one team I do watch more of, it would be Italy. And I got to agree with you, Gabe. That game just screams of either nil-nil or one-nil or one-one at best. It really does. So under two and a half, um, even with juice, seems like a solid play. I was just mentioning to you guys off off air. It's almost a mechanical thing to do in these euros to just play all the draws and sit back and hope to collect as you were saying on 204 and take your cash and go because they just seem to be um so limited as far as scoring is concerned in these things so far but that game in particular i think will stay under guys canada played chile tomorrow night in the copa america the total is two and a half and it's reasonable it's like minus 138 um as you know 125 it's not like really heavily shaded or anything to the under Chile have not scored a goal in the Copa. They got shut out twice, okay? And Canada has scored one goal in their last six games, five, six games, right? They didn't score against, uh, they didn't score leading in their, in their warm-up games, their exhibition. Now, listen, they played the best teams in the world, but they didn't score against France. They didn't score against the Netherlands. They got shut out by Argentina. They scored one goal against Peru, and they were a man up. And it was like a miracle, like off the post. It was a nice play and stuff, but it was not easy to get a goal against Peru for Canada. Now you're playing a Chilean team that they don't surrender goals. These guys just held Argentina to a goal, right? Like they lost one nothing Argentina. They played a scoreless draw in their first game. So in other words, they haven't scored and they've given up one goal. And Canada has given up two goals in two games and scored once. I'm hammering the under two and a half tomorrow, Rob. This game's going under. Yeah, I mean, that's as good a sell job as you can get, which you just laid out there, Gabe. And obviously, some of these teams do play so close to the best, more defensive than offensive. Chile, as you described it, they're one of those teams at this point in time. Um, so, again, two and a half always looks like a small number, and you get nervous, but it's a large number in these games. You just watch oh, the, the clock, clock keep running. Yeah, before you know it, it's one and a half, and you're like, damn, I should have taken the two and a half. (laughs) Exactly.
gosh, I'm trying to hold it in right now. Um, the, the support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson Effect. <laughs> I mean, with how much support we have out here, and it's just the start, that's, that's a testament to what Live Golf is and what the Crushers are doing, what uh, our team's doing, and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So super excited for the, the future of Live. to at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, very proud of everybody. And, and of course, Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. This is Sports Rage. I am Ramsey, the pitch, the players, the hustlers, the people to bust them, and everybody else uh, in between. Let's do this thing. Great stuff uh, with Rob Vina. We've been jam-packed on the program tonight. Before we bring uh, George Kurtz in, just looking at the numbers, Cam, for this uh, Italia and Switzerland matchup. Can't wait. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern time. And um, so the total, two and a half, as we mentioned, it's moved. has it come down a little bit? It's one, is it 188 now? Let me see. I think it's... No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Oh, no. I was wrong. I saw 163, and I got excited. Both teams to score no is 163. The total is now 225. People Uh are hammering the under of this game. So it's almost getting into you're going to have to put it in parlays. But I'm taking the draw at plus 230 as well. So it sort of evens out. Yet, I was going to say, under one and a half in Italy and Switzerland, is plus 140. So, um, excuse me, plus 240. So, um, you're getting not a bad price uh, there. The under one and a half at um, plus plus 240, one and a half. And like I said, guys, I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, you can't bet everything yet. I'll get you the number for nil-nil. I would really not be shocked if this game was nil-nil. Italy are hard to score on. They're going to lock things up, man. Italy like play for the lot. Italy like to have it nil nil and try to beat you in the ninetieth minute. This is their drill, and then conversely, Switzerland, very conservative side as well. They're also very responsible. Italy are in tough here, man. I gotta tell you what, I, I would not be shocked if the Swiss beat them. Like Switzerland can't. One thing with Switzerland, they're big dudes. They're very fit, and they wear on you. So they're always sort of leaning on you and they're very physical and stuff. And then they get you with their set pieces. They on their mm-hmm. corner kicks and their free kicks. They're bigger dudes. They lobby the ball into the box. They're very good with headers. They got guys that can get up in the air. Italy are going to be in tough here, but Italy are like Mr. Magoo. They walk yep. around blindly and they look like they're going to die all the time. And they they can successfully walk through the plank, and they they sort of duck at the last second, and they survive. And it's like, oh, Italia, we're the best. It's like you guys should have lost, right? But you, they they do it all the time. So yeah. I don't know. As I stated, like I said, it wouldn't shock me if Switzerland won, but it'll probably be nil nil. Go into extra time, uh, and like uh, you know the, the 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 extra thirty, and Italy will score in the hundred eighteenth minute or something. Well, and win right, one nil, but this game is going to be a low-scoring match. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Here's another thing. Great point about Switzerland. They're going to play defense too. And hopefully, you know, it's going to be one of those games and then maybe even like go, go you know, extra time kicks, whatever the hell is going to happen here in the knockout stage. Love the draw game. Let's remember one thing too. Spain has one of the best defenses. Italy did not score. They only scored two goals against Albania and literally, literally in the last second of injury time to tie Croatia to get to this spot against Switzerland. Let's talk about this. I like the draw as well. Swiss on the Asia, uh, Asian line too. And uh, yeah, I love I love this game. Nil nil too. I'm gonna make the exact score nil nil uh, in regulation. I've got Spain to win this uh, tournament. Ed. they're looking very very good. You could argue they look the, like they're the best team, but it doesn't matter. They're also in the toughest bracket, and they get Georgia. They're gonna be Georgia, and then they're gonna have to play Germany because Germany's gonna be Denmark. So Spain's going to have to play Germany, and then after that, they'll have to go through the Frances and the Portugals of the world in the bottom of that bracket. Like, Spain's trip is very difficult. Italy's is not. Italy and England are on a collision course. So one of those teams is going to be eliminated. And then after, though, they'll have to get through the Netherlands, and I actually think the Netherlands will get you guys a number, guys, but I believe it's plus 550 right now for the Netherlands to make the final. And this isn't me telling you I think the Netherlands are the best team in the world, but we've seen them. They're capable of getting the finals. They don't pull it off. Yet you look at the side of their bracket, they're going to get there. Like they're going to play either England or or they're going to play England or or Italy, and Italy might get knocked out or Switzerland or whatever. Austria are are a sleeper, but the Netherlands at plus 550, not a bad bet, guys, to get to uh, the Netherlands can play with anybody in the world. Like they're not they're not scared, they're not intimidated. It's like, all right, let's go, Argentina. Right? Like they can yep. play with anybody. They don't always win, but they will not be intimidated, the Dutch. Let's bring in George Kurtz right now, who's not watching uh the soccer. George, good to see you. We'll talk baseball with Kurtz. What's going on, George? Hey Kurtz. What's going on? You know, uh, Mr. Magoo, by the way, I, I learned to hate Mr. Magoo as a child because uh we're all about the same age, right? And back in grade school. If uh, it was too cold to go outside, you know, your recess had to be inside. They put you in an auditorium, and it was always Mr. Magoo. They would uh, they would put on the screen to make us watch there. I didn't think Mr. Magoo was all that funny. So you got funny, you got tired so. of it. You got yeah, tired yeah. of it. I think. Well, I think it, you equate it with oh, we can't go outside and play, and you know, we got to stay in. And we'll, and Mr. Magoo was just we just took it out of Magoo because of that because we couldn't go outside. What and would play you have preferred? <laughs> what would you what would you what would you prefer? Uh, Tom and Jerry was good, good. pretty good. Uh, Woody Woodpecker. Tom and Jerry. Oh my Would God. You what are you, Woody, 70 years old? Mr. Magoo, he, seriously, like grab a herbal tea. That's ridiculous, You're George. You, Mr. Marancy. <laughs> I don't, uh, <laughs> yeah, I I wasn't it. Tom and Jerry. Yeah, yeah. Was, all right. Tom and Jerry, Tom and Jerry uh, was great. Yeah, how about, how about yeah. Tunes? Can, I, can I get a little Bugs Bunny? Sure, I sure. Mean, we, yeah. we got either Magoo or we got black and white cartoons, you know, the ones from like the 40s that were like, what? Not even funny. You couldn't even understand. So uh, maybe it was my school Sounds district, like, okay? Yeah, I was going to say, that's what I was going to say. It sounds like you went to a lame school. Like It was more like the product of your school. <laughs> the public school. Clara Mr. Collison, Magoo. by the way, if anybody's interested in the, uh, Which yeah. one? In the Which mid- late 70s. Clara H. Collison. Clara H. Collison in the Sawanica School District. Hmm. Who's, the, um, who's the most famous alum that uh, went to your high school? Oh, you'll easily know it. Uh, let's see. Quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Did he test the Verde? Ding, 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 ding. Ah, I gra- there we go. I, I graduated with his sister. Uh, oh. Maria, Maria Vinny Testaverde, huh? Is that sister yeah, from my town, from my high school. I believe uh, Tony Savalas so, also, back forever ago, also Tony graduated Savalas. from Florida. Oh, that's, that's cooler than Vinny yeah. Testaverde. I would have started with Kojak. But... But uh, so was Vinny Testaverde the quarterback of the high school team when you were there? Not when I was there. He's, he was exactly four years ahead of me. So he left, I came in. So I never saw him play mm-hmm. high school ball, no. But uh, very popular, very nice guy. Met him a couple of times. Very, very almost shy and quiet, but a very nice yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's, uh, what, what's, uh, what's the name of the team? What's, your, what's the, uh, the name of your school? Well, it's one of those schools that had to change names. Oh, they changed the name. The, uh, what, what were you guys, oh. the Indians before or something? What were you, the Warriors? There you go. Look at that. Indians. Look at that. Oh. Monica Indians. Oh, right. They just changed oh, it, I think, like a year or two ago. Here, All the rules changed in New York State. where they weren't gonna, they, uh, All the schools weren't going to get money unless you changed the names. 
I do not know what they changed it to. I guess that's bad on me, but they have changed the yeah. name. But it's one of the no school pride at all, Kurtz. I, I'm assuming uh, you're not. You don't donate to the Christmas. To, you're not to, to the, <laughs> the fun day. You don't even. I, I don't know what they're called. I don't even live in the district anymore. I'm not even close. No, it's an hour away from me. I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm, no, I'm not. <laughs> I am curious what the name is. I want to know what the name is now. Now I got to find out. During the break, what was it, I'll find Clara? What, what was it, Clara? No. What was the name of the school? My grade school was Clara H. Carlson. The high school though was uh, Sawanica. Oh, Sawanica. Okay, we'll look up the Sawanica. You know, it's funny though because New York, New Jersey, whatever, is a lot of Native history, obviously, right? And I, I, like you said, that's why I wasn't surprised with the Indians. And I lived right near a very cool stadium. Anyone that's living in New York now, the guys in Mass Control or wherever know what I'm talking about. If you've seen it, you ever seen it, Kurtz? The Weehawken Stadium. It's off the Lincoln Tunnel. It's like the pictures, weirdest I, I thing not, ever. Not, like you're going, it's all like Lincoln Tunnel. And suddenly, there's just like this cool yeah. football stadium, field and stuff. It's really cool, nice. And it's just I've always just been freaked out, man. Imagine playing high school ball. And you're playing above the Lincoln Tunnel, and you see New York City looking over. But they're actually pretty good. I'll look up who their players are. But they were the Weehawken Indians. And um, they were supposed to change the name. And I remember the school said, suck it. We're not changing the name. Like, point blank. Look for Weehawken. Yeah, they were like, no. trying to hold it in right now um the support's been overwhelming tickets for nashville this week are nearly sold out we are calling this the bryson effect <laughs> i mean with how much support we have out here and it's just the start that's that's a testament to what live golf is and what the crushers are doing what uh, our team's doing and um what we're trying to do for for nashville and places all across the globe so super excited for the, the future of live it was nice to at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done it's never safe but um, very proud of everybody and, and of course Tiro I mean what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. This is Sports Red. Giant Morency. We're kicking it. George Kurtz kicking with us. Uh, Cam Stewart in the house. We'll get back to some Copa uh, stuff. Uh, but we'll get back. To, I want to get uh, George's take on with the playoff bracket. But let me ask Kurtz uh, this. Shoei Otani coming into tonight over his last 10 games. Eight home runs, 17 RBIs, batting average, 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Um, you know, these are actually his real numbers uh, right now. And I believe coming into tonight... He was um, number one in batting average, number three in RBIs, and uh, home runs. I guess, what is he, two? Two or three, Kurtz? He's sort of four. Like, he's sort of flirting, you know, potentially triple crown, right? I don't know if he actually does it, but he's flirting with it. 
Can he be the MVP? Is he the MVP solely as a designated hitter? All right. If not him, who? Who? Acuna's hurt. Betts is hurt, so they're out. Harper just got hurt. He's out. If not Harper, who? I mean, if not the Otani, who? That would be my question. I don't know if there's anybody even close to him right now. And I don't like guys who just play DH. I, I get it. You, you know, you're only playing half the game. You know, you had nothing defensively here, but but who? I, that's who I keep coming back to. I mean, who else are we going to vote for now? Harper, Schwarber, Betts are all down, right? They all got hurt here. Acuna, gone. They, I, I, don't, I don't know who else we could vote for. I, you're right. You know Looking I mean? at the I mean, odds, I'm not for a lesser he's minus two twenty right now. So he's going to like. I think, he's... I think it's almost over. Otani and uh, the National League is judging the American League. I'm not sure who's going, sure who's going to even close to uh, for anybody to challenge you at the one, except maybe Henderson going up the judge. Like you said, if you look at the National League, the second choice is Freddie Freeman, <laughs> seven to one. Wow. They're not giving it to Freeman over Otani. So Ooh. and then you got Bryce Harper. Uh, plus eight fifty. Ozuna sixteen to one. Marte is twenty three to one. And like I said, guys, Ozuna's Otani. Uh, yeah, and and Otani's going to end up being in the top three in probably all three categories or top five or whatnot. So, and, and you know what? It's sort of like the Connor McDavid stuff that we discussed last week. Well, it's rare that a player that loses, and all right, it hadn't happened since what two thousand three with Jaguar. But the media kind of let us know. That no, we don't care that he's going to lose. Like we said, Kurtz and Camp. He said, Kurtz, mm-hmm. who else was it going to be? Not Bobrovsky. It wasn't, you know, I mean, Bark, no, Barkov, Kachuk mm-hmm. didn't do enough. Like, no one stood out. So it was like, okay, no, we're going to give it to McDavid. And listening to media and listening to the people in the baseball world debate this about Otani over the last couple of days, Kurtz, I haven't heard one person say, no, you can't, I refuse to do it because he's a DH. And the only people that have that take are like the old get off my lawn old dudes in a in a tavern right now. Oh, this is garbage. He doesn't even play all the time. Anyone with an actual vote and modern baseball people are like, he's the best player. Of course, he's the MVP. And I mean, you can't even make the argument that he's all like Mike Trout, where you win it on a bad team. No, Dodgers going to make the playoffs. They're going to finish first team. So that argument's out the door as well. Yeah, and Mookie like Betts I is said, hurt, so he's carrying them. And oh. another thing too is, guys, imagine. You can't yes. also say it's like Ortiz, like, oh, he's some fat guy that can't yeah. play defense. He would be pitching if his arm wasn't hurt. Good point. If, if Betts would have stayed healthy, I think that's your arm, because Betts was having a great year. And he plays very good defensively, and he's moved from the outfield to the infield to help the Dodgers out. I think that would have been a very good argument there. But he's not. He didn't stay healthy. He broke his hand. If Otani does stay healthy, unless someone in the second half of the season goes bananas, and I just don't see that. And I said Bryce Harper would have been that guy, but now he's down with a growing injury. We don't know when he'll be back. You know, so I don't I don't see it. I just don't see it. It can't be Ozuna. He's a DH as well. A Freeman's not going to win it over Otani. Uh, so, no, I, I just don't see it unless someone goes berserk that we're not, we're not thinking of. Aaron yep. Judge is minus 220 to win the American League. What about Soto? He's going to hit 60 again. So they won't let me. I'm looking right now. FanDuel will not let me parlay both of them together. No. This uh, is something, though, no, you'll can't. Yeah, I can't vote on the oh, MVP. You... I can't bid on the MVP. That's oh. ridiculous. That's so dumb. It doesn't make what do they, do they really think that we're getting together and we're going to talk to sports writers and voting for our guy? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. How does that make any sense? I don't understand that, why we can't vote for uh, player awards. You you live in the same state as Michael K does, and you're gonna somehow get to Michael K right. on his drive home from Yankee <laughs> Stadium and tell him you better <laughs> f and vote my <laughs> way, otherwise I'm gonna <laughs> whack you. I mean, I, I just don't understand. <laughs> it. No, it's no but it's the same logic, either. guys. Though no, I was talking about this. Game. No it's the same logic. They're like, all right, in the state of New Jersey, you can't bet on the Rutgers game because uh-huh. someone might be able to get to them, but you can bet on the St. John's game. And it's like I've always said, Kurtz. I said, you realize that St. John's are playing at MSG, which is like 10 minutes from here. Rutgers actually is like three hours away, two hours away. <laughs> Takes a while to get out there. Like, so somehow it's like you can't bet on the team on one side of the bridge and tunnel. But, oh, no, no, like the same people would never be able to take the teams in New York that you could bet on. Think about the preposterousness of this, people. People that live in the state of Virginia, that want, when they want to bet on a Virginia Cavalier game, they have to drive to the border and they drive to the West Virginia side and then they bet on the Virginia Cavaliers. 
and people who want to bet on West Virginia have to drive on the other side of the border to go on the Virginia side so they can bet on West Virginia games. And so, okay, fine, you want to be this stupid. And then, George, they, they turn around and accept Karjitsu and tractor pull <laughs> betting in New Jersey. I'm not even kidding. Like you can bet on they're gonna they're gonna have a tractor pull league or something. I guess they do already. Right. Guys, big guys are pulling tractors and stuff. Fine. You can bet on it. New Jersey sanctioned it, but they won't let you bet on a damn Aaron Judge prop. What the hell's wrong with this world? It doesn't make any I'd I'd love to hear the logic about it, but but I think uh, Judge, like I said, I can see Henderson making a run at Judge. I can certainly see that he's having a fantastic year, but it and I think Judge is gonna reset the record, by the way. I just don't see how he's not. Uh, if he stays healthy, I think he's going to hit 64, 65 again. And it's just uh, unless team, until teams learn George, not to pitch to George, him, go pitch to J.D. Davis. He's a, he's a train wreck. Don't laugh at me, but Bobby Witt's in the four hole. The guy's on pace for almost 50 stolen bases on top, probably yeah, around 25. Hen- Henderson's now doing right. the shortstop. Yeah, okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying he's having a great year. Witt, Witt is I'm great. Saying, like for value. Witt is great, but Henderson gets to vote over him by almost all analytics other than the stolen bases. It. And Henderson steals a lot of bases, too. So if, if Henderson's over with there and they're just as good defensively, then it really comes down to Henderson and Judge. But like I said, I think Judge is going to get a big boost. He's going to hit 60-plus again. No one's ever done that. We'll hit, we'll hit the rookie of the year odds on the other side. Support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson effect. <laughs> I mean, with how much support we have out here and it's just the start, that's that's a testament to what Live Golf is and what the Crushers are doing, what uh, our team's doing, and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So super excited for the, the future of Live. walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done it's never safe but um, very proud of everybody and, and of course Tiro I mean what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did uh, it was absolutely incredible so I couldn't be happier for him Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. Aaron Judge continues to kill it. And uh, we got props up here as far as Aaron Judge is concerned. And, Kurtz, you believe the judge is probably, potentially could break his own record and reset uh, reset the record here. There's some props up. Aaron Judge to hit 60 or more home runs plus 200. Aaron Judge to hit 63 or more home runs plus 450. I said at the uh, beginning of the year, by the way, uh, on, on all these shows, if Judge stays healthy, he's hitting over 60. It, it's just that simple. Uh, the, the man's, he just, he, everything is a uh, hit hard. He had, the, he, had a, 
He had a bull that I swear to God that the shortstop jumped for tonight that went off the wall. All right, it was a nice rope. I don't know why teams pitch to him. I don't. Because I'm telling you right now, I would walk him every time he came to the plate. J.D. freaking Davis is batting behind him. Go ahead, Mr. Judge, take first base. I would never pitch to Aaron Judge. Never. And you wonder if teams are going to wake up and start doing this again, but they, they don't seem to. Judge will hit. If he uh, doesn't get hurt the rest of the season, I understand that's a big gift with Aaron Judge. He hits 60-plus uh, here. I think he's going to do it again. I believe that for the beginning of the season, nothing has changed my mind now. It seems that the modern era, they don't like intentionally walking people. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't understand Why? it either. We've talked about it. Like, I would just be like, all right, listen. If he's going to hit a home run once in every four at-bats, guys, and he's facing us four times today, let's just walk him, right? And if we have to pitch to him later in the game, we'll pitch to him later in the game. It's not who, there's no one behind him. Who? Why don't you walk to face J.D. Davis or Alex Verdugo? I mean, or Gleyber Torres? I don't. I don't get it. You know, Judge could hit one 500 feet. Those guys can't. Okay, they're, they're terrible. You know, I just. Don't, I'm a big believer in don't let the other team's best player beat you, especially when they don't have anybody else. I mean, I understand it's bases loaded, nobody out. Okay, you probably got to face them, but other than that. Take take your base. I'll, I'll let let Torres beat me. Let JD Davis beat me. I am not letting Aaron Judge beat me. Here are the American League updated uh, odds to win the American League right now. The Yankees are plus two hundred. The Baltimore Orioles are plus three eighty. Seattle Mariners are seven to one. Interesting. The Mariners are the third choice. The Guardians are also seven to one. The Astros starting to play better baseball and getting healthier. Plus eight fifty, even though they got lit tonight. Uh, Twins, plus 850. Rangers, 18 to 1. Now, if we can, guys, if you can uh, get the uh, the bracket uh, up for our television uh, viewers as far as the if the playoffs started today, uh, this is what the matchups uh, would be. And, uh, Kurtz, you being a uh, Yankee fan, I'm sure you're very, very but tough, tough matchup <laughs> for you getting the I'm Minnesota saying. Twins, huh? That's why I'm laughing. I mean, you know what's the twins, man. Man. If you're the Minnesota <laughs> Twins, it's like, why? Why do we have to play the Yankees? Like, let us play <laughs> anyone else. Like, it's so true. Anybody but them, right? Anybody but the Yankees. Uh, I, what's you know, the I, record I just laugh because... off the top of your head? What's the record? It's like, uh, what, 41 and 4 now or something stupid like that? Like, literally? They were... Yankees went 6-0 and against them this year. Twins actually won the season series last year. It was let you know how bad the Yankees were last year. But, oh, like the last 162 games, the Yankees have won 125 times. It's crazy what they've done to the Twins. And that, that includes playoffs, by the way. But it's crazy how much they've owned this team. So, yeah, I, as a Yankee fan, I'd feel pretty good if we had to uh, play the Minnesota Twins in the first round. 16-2 right, so the- against them, Gabe. 16-2. and two. In the last 18, 16-2. And- and it's a pretty dominant run, but it's like Kurt says, it even goes deeper. It's just been, and in the playoffs, it's just like pure death all the time for the Twins. So that's if if the playoffs started today, it would be the uh, the the Twins and the Yankees. Now it would also be at the top end of that bracket the Kansas City Royals and the Seattle Mariners. Whoa, no one predicted that before the year started, man. You know, that would have been good odds. Can't be told, people. I think the uh, the Royals and Mariners will both. Uh, make the playoffs, let alone play each other. Who would you take, Cam? Who would you take uh, in the Royals and uh, Mariners to win the series? Hate to say it, but Seattle. Even though I'm, you know, I have a soft spot in my heart for the Royals. Uh, just Seattle's pitching is better. Uh, their bullpen is better. Uh, their hitting will come around. It's getting a little bit better. But Kansas City has some really good players, young players on the team, but they're not there yet. So Seattle has a significant edge over Kansas City, despite the Royals overachieving. Uh, you guys know they'll come back down to earth, but uh, they're, they've been great this year. But uh, give me Seattle, Gabe. Kurt, you think Seattle would beat uh, Kansas City? I do. I, I agree with everything Cam said. Everything Cam said. I think Seattle is that team to watch if they can add a bat or two. And I think if you're looking for that team to compete with the uh, Baltimore Orioles, you know, as far as on the mm-hmm. top teams here, I think that's Seattle. But they need to add at least one bat. Maybe too. They should not have let Teoscar Hernandez go here because I think if they had him, then they would need to add another man. Uh, well, he's he's fitting in fine in LA. <laughs> We're happy to have him. Yeah. I know you are. <laughs>